Good morning, everybody. Thanks for having me, Joe. My pleasure. Let me, uh, shall I introduce you a little? Please. He's a smart guy. There's Gunter. Hi. Apparently, I'm smart, and I'm here to talk to you guys about distance selling and how not to suck in a digital environment. It's one of the things we've actually been working on a lot with our clients lately is, uh, you know, post, uh, there's apparently some kind of uh, little virus that's caused a bit of an issue um, and interrupted some of our ability to sell or communicate with our clients on a normal basis. And Gunter is uh, one of my, he's actually my very first client when I was out on my own. Mm -hmm. We found one another through a tweet I tweeted something about a mutual friend. He gave a thumbs up. I visited his site, which completely sucked. I told Still him so. And uh, it's like, maybe we should talk. And that was tens of thousands of dollars ago. That's social media, folks. Yeah. But it was just me talking to a guy, just saying, hey, you ever look at this? He's like, oh, we should probably look at that. It was that simple. And, uh, he is, uh, he's spoken at 10X three or four times. He's mm -hmm. one of the, if I actually had ratings, he would be among the highest rated speakers. And back in the day when he was allowed to leave his house, he could command five figures to stand in front of a room of, at Roche or some big company and teach entire sales force and stuff. So get that now virtually. Can you get 10 grand sitting in your house these days? It's mm -hmm. a lot of money for sitting at home. I mean, it's not like a webinar or anything. It's just a small group of people that we're talking to. I know, but still. Yeah. Why get me that money? Well, one of the ways is to get a PhD and to be willing to read the entire PPACA and interpret it for people to understand what it means. Things I am not willing to do for $10,000 a day. These are the typical choices we make. They are. Black, blue. Those new glasses? Yeah, I uh, I can't see shit. So You've aged since? You know, um, and I'm happy to say that this camera-based makeup is making me look much younger than you. Because it's true. But when we met, I looked older and you looked younger. You think I look older than you now? Yeah, you do. Look at you. All right, everybody. We're going to do a popularity contest? Fuck we are. Absolutely. Put your face right up there. I actually have a high-resolution camera. I'm so impressed. You should be. All right, everybody. Who looks older? Be nice. Are they voting? Nobody's voting. I think they're afraid of intimidating them. I'm not going to disagree. And, 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 we've, and we have lost attendees because of this. <laughs> <laughs> Ryan looks older is the answer. There you go. And he's the youngest guy here, so. Stupid Ryan. You put him on to make us both look bad. Mm hmm We should probably entertain the people with some knowledge. Go ahead. Uh, so we are talking about distance selling. If you don't mind. Okay. Um, Okay, so we have fancy slides and all that sort of stuff, but we're, we're going to talk about this. The, uh, the not-so-meek-and-humble um, offer to anybody here is if you guys are interested in putting together a MedDevices distance selling course, we will invest in our relationship with Joe Hage and make that available to you. We can do this at a scheduled time. Um, and we'll give you the abbreviated version of that the less abusive, less exercise intense, but more conceptually, conceptually rich and refined version. Um, and uh, so one of the problems we saw emerging here is something self-diagnosed, all the Zoom fatigue and everything that was a new term that was kicked around. I, you know, I'm standing here on my feet today presenting to a camera. I'm looking at this camera, then I'm looking at myself. I'm looking at my camera. Am I really being as effective as I should be? Am I doing the right things and so forth? These are questions I ask myself. Joe asks himself. You probably ask yourself, but it's not the sort of thing that most people who are selling things are asking themselves. Mm -hmm. They're trying to get through the points on their, on their PowerPoint. They're closing off their camera so they can't be seen. They're creating levels of disengagement with their content that are really punishing them in a sales performance manner. And 
you know, we make money on our clients' ability to sell more. And if they're not selling more, they're less, in, less inclined to spend money with us. And so we wanted to solve that problem. So the first principle here behind distance selling is not related to distance selling, but it's about in, engaging your marketplace. We saw a hole in the market. Uh, there were quite a few training organizations and commercial consulting organizations out there offering lots of free advice in little short snippet forms about what you should do when you're trying to sell on Zoom, for example. There are also major brands out there that rolled out brand new courses on distance selling and they charged a premium for them, which in a value-based pricing world makes sense because we don't have to travel, you don't have to do anything, you can consume this stuff. And we looked at our customer base saying that they were, they were loath to invest in this, their budgets were constrained, their budgets were crunched. Um, they were not planning appropriately. They were doing a whole lot of reacting. And so we created a marketing campaign to offer distance selling skills, a full unabridged proper course worth $1,600 per person over, over two days with four sessions, inclusive of a workshop and, and a, a manual and post reinforcement and coaching for nothing except putting us on the approved vendor list, uh, letting us bid on the next budgeted opportunity that they have for training. And then thirdly, that they provide us with a glowing reference if they found it to be positive. So we're collecting those references at this point and we'll have a, a great reference base for a distance selling course, which hopefully from all, everyone's perspective will become irrelevant. We don't think it will in the, in the long term because we see a different shift in the way that buying centers, um, hospitals, doctors, doctor's offices, and so on are transacting business today. It's pretty convenient for them to interact with salespeople in a controlled type of environment. They don't come in here and stink up the place with their perfume. There's no bribery with donuts. There's none of that stuff. It's just pure information transfer in a low contact, unemotional, and therefore disengaged fashion. And as you, as you know, nobody likes to buy something in a highly engaged fashion. We prefer disengaged and passive. It's a very big problem. So the course itself is going to evolve into distance negotiation, uh, distance strategy and distance prospecting, all that sort of stuff. We have variants that we've built on the, on the back of it. So and that, yeah. What you just said is be personable and be aware of your lighting and your po how you're sitting and how good your audio is. And it's worth investing in a real camera and real lights. Mm -hmm. You said it more fancy. Microphone. I got my lights. Ear monitors. I got my special cat, uh, microphone and I get it. You're like, okay, well, you guys and for a living, don't we all? Well, green screen. Yeah. I didn't do the green screen because I have the whole, I chose to, I'd have to move my desk. I really don't want to do that. We well, I, I screen and it was impossible to cover the entire room. My CFO, um, banished me into a small guest room where I had a very elaborate office and she also has a very elaborate office, uh, which looks great in the background, but I can't so just ask me to shower. That's the arrangement we have. That's a good one. Just don't be, you know, come to think of it. It was on the list to, for today. I I'll get to that. Your CFO is going to be on the call today. No, no. Hmm. The activities, my shower was on the list for today. I think so. It's good. good. I got the list. You get yeah. a list. No, no. Well, I'm going. I, you need to buy my negotiation course. How much? Well, Joe, there's always the Joe price. Okay, what's the non-Joe price? A published value of $1,600 per person for a four-session course. How long are the sessions? In a virtual format, they are 90 minutes apiece. Okay. Giving you the time to ingest, relax, ingest, relax, do an exercise, and then report it. So... Yeah, good stuff. I think it's worth your personal development, actually. It, it would. Uh, I, I'm, I'm intrigued. I'm as, you're, as you are surprised by my speaking fees, I think there's some room. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm not surprised by your speaking fees. I've always been in awe of your speaking fees because I've never got $10,000 worth of shit to say. 
it's been purely by accident. I've got to say there's been no planning, no strategy, no, nothing to do with it. It's been not everyone on the call knows Gunter or is from this culture and understands that he speaks in code and sarcasm. So that was sarcastic. Yeah. What's it saying? The function of it's deliberate. What's it saying in your mouth? Uh, this is uh, this is my broker gives me the uh, Edward Jones mug. Okay, so really, I can't believe that you are not having a liquid smarts mug. Do I? Have well, a- you know what? Um, I'm going to put that on the list. I'm going to put that on the list. Um, we we prefer to give away programs that have a very high value output and a low cost input. I like that stretch. So I'd rather give you an hour of consultation, which is worth $1,200 to you, than a coffee mug, which is... I didn't give you the coffee mug. I used it for branding on my own call. That's true. I have a, well, no, I have a Liquid Smarts t-shirt, but you notice this uh, this little thing right there? I see it. Turns out that helps. Mm. So... Um, is this how you get success? Talking trash at your... All right, go on. It's a it's a focus on the things that matter. Go on. All right. So distance selling fundamentals. Um, there are there are a couple of layers to consider, but do you, screen, do you want to do for those? No, this is okay. this is simple. Up to you. If you can't hold it in your head, I can't communicate it. Just Fair because. Enough. So the first layer of consideration in distance selling is written communications. So a big chunk of what we spend our, our precious learner time focusing on is how do you structure communications that don't cause you to disappear, be ignored, or otherwise appear like a low value or not worthwhile response. There are plenty of fancy techniques to do this, but the regular, reliable, repeatable ways to do this is to, for example, on the introduction email, have your company name and then your name. That's the subject line. Especially if you're trying to introduce yourself, introduce company name and your name, and then you have a framework for asking for a a meeting, which is called POST, Purpose, Outcome, Structure, and Timing. So in that email, you would say the purpose of this email is to alert you to a report that we have compiled for businesses in your area and the confounds of performance they've encountered over the last six months. At the outcome, we will give you a report, but we need to ask you a few questions first. Therefore, we're asking for a phone call that will last about 30 minutes. Are you available between 7.30 and 8, 9.30 and 10? 10 and 10.30 on these days. That's the way, so you have a very clear who you are, not ducking saying, you know, the, like HubSpot and all these guys have these attention getting headlines and they're all being beaten to death by the political campaigns and all the other guys out there. What we've, what we found in a B2B situation being forthright and clear about who you are, if they don't know your name, they don't know your company name, at least they've recognized it. On the next time that shows up, they'll see it again. And once the short, less than 120 word email is consumed, it took about a minute and they have a decision to make. And that's the most effective. And at the end, you say, please, can we find some time to talk You know, within this time frame? Please, you say, please, twice, because that actually increases your response rate by 20%. And that's the only trickery that's included in the format behind written communications. Just, if you don't mind pulling up the screen and showing me an email, because I'm especially intrigued by the subject line, which I've spent quite a bit of time talking about with. Yes, you have. And we are, we're not a hundred percent online on that one. Are no, we? We are not. Okay. Let me find this one. That's why I'm prepared for it. So, are you saying that I would say um, I would use the words medical devices group in my subject line? Mm-hmm. Okay. Why are you allergic to that? Um, because if no one's, uh, so I'll use, uh, I'll use cardiac science. So if you never heard of, uh, no, I'll do better. Uh, let me, uh, Michelle's on the call, I think. If I were to say um, lean RAQA, what's the context? 
for me to say that, you know, I, I don't know who that company is. Mm -hmm. So why would I want to open something from that person? Unless it was something a bit more. Appointment request. Go ahead. Appointment request. Okay, here we are. No, virtually. You're looking at some of this verbal communications. I'm flipping through because I really was prepared to do that. So here you go. You're sending an email to Don Wanna Talk at mustwinthisdeal.com. Corporate name, your name, Don. The purpose is the email is to request a 30 minute call with you to share the findings of the proprietary review of local market conditions and opportunities that have emerged over the last six months. After the meeting, you'll understand where your organization stands compared to benchmarks and cost standards. Before we can provide it to you, we need to ask you a few simple questions. So booking calls this week, boom, 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 boom. Please respond to me at a preferred time, please. Sincerely, gotcha. Okay, so one of the things that I would recommend that you do with this is I would put hyperlinks for your three times to choose among so you can click and go straight to it and book the meeting. That's fine. Very good. Um, I try and keep these things as link free as possible to make it stand apart from the emails, email snares that are out there that look yeah, for attachments or links. Well, you could split test that anyhow, if you're True. doing this major campaign. Yeah, but the other part about this is I'm focusing this on a individual salesperson who split tests their time never. They no, need something that's that, but yeah. you're the guy who's teaching us, so you might yeah. learn that lesson and then advise. But personally, yeah. I'd make it simple. the reason for leaving it empty is yes, making it easy to click on the website is a different workflow, but in an interaction the email interaction needs to signal credibility. You need to be, so the, the punctuation and everything needs to be right. The grammar needs to be right. I hear you. It needs to be short, focused, mm -hmm. business tone, neutral, and also realistic because if I'm asking for 30 minutes and I just give you hour long blocks, I'm not reinforcing the idea that it's only going to be 30 minutes and I mean it. So I put in two thirty and four and seven thirty and 11 knowing that they're going to pick a time on the hour most likely but a half hour a half hour meeting to do this is enough i've got enough time to create the contact create the awareness and create the the impact that i'm looking for but this is an example of where we oftentimes screw up when we're asking for a meeting with written communications we'll talk about the order and the workflow in a second but this is a slice into how do i maximize my influence in a in an area where don understands that i'm a company i'm not a brand new outbound communications person don knows that he's heard of liquid smarts the liquid smarts go into your vessels and i might say meeting request i mean good your vessels is in is in the front line isn't it yeah so why would you say from Gunter vessels subject Liquid smarts, Gunter vessels. Because it causes me to focus. It's unusual. Okay. I buy into that. It's also not offensive and it doesn't create credibility shear. And if you wanted to change it, you could say Gunter vessels appointment request. But we looked at a lot of these communications and this is the synthesis of best practice in clarity. Okay. So, so you did some real testing around this to get to this point. It's science backed by experience, baby. Science. So written communications also come along in the form of texts. There are a lot of problems with texts, right? Don't do it while you're driving. It's bad for you. you um, a driving and texting image there. I mean, what do you? Well, I just did say texting pitfalls. Fair enough. I look after his work later on. Thank you. Um, we have, uh, and I, I only text while I'm speeding and eating in my car because you have to do two things at once. Um, communication here, this little show up is that it tends, out, it tends to be a situation where we don't really understand what's being understood based on punctuation, capitalization, and so forth because it depends on the generation. It depends on the person. Depends on the culture, what you're putting here. So be very careful with text and texting best practices are all about, you know, making sure that you are uh, communicating coordination activities 
first and foremost. I will be late is an appropriate text to your client. Or can we, you know, is that clear? Am I coming through? Something I need to have in a out of band communication is a good use of texting. To text with your customers opens you up to a back office kind of interaction, which is fine, but you shouldn't pass jokes. You shouldn't take, you know, pictures. Keep it professional. And these things all seem on, on seem obvious, but when we are dealing with salespeople who have friendships developing with clients, it ends up being a problem sometimes. So um, don't do the phonetic spelling like R, the letter R, U there. Mm -hmm. uh, you're going to love this. Skip the emojis. Just a short, concise message. Skip the emojis. You have the thing on emojis in your, uh, in your blogs and your written communications. Thank we're going to talk, we're going to talk about for a sales interaction. That's a bit of an issue. Okay. Um, length best. If it's less than 120 words, brevity is beauty, right? So where these things fail is if they're needlessly long, if they're wandering or repetitive, extended pleasantries are the biggest sin here mm -hmm. in distance written communications. Um, and here, underlining, bolding, emojifying, all of these things. Sue at per, super at big opportunity is gonna, getting this email from skip my call and he's going to get what his name asked for. Here's a recap of the meeting and email. Don't do that. First we did this, then we did that. Then you noted how awesome our stuff was. It is, it is a bad internal narrative written down in, in, uh, in words. And in fact, um, we see a lot about this. Here's how it goes worse. It's like, thank you so much. I'm so grateful. I'm so impressed. All these extended pleasantries, which for a business communication are distracting. So to you really understand this business? Yeah, that's why I have the job. It creates reactance on the part of the, the reader immediately, especially if you, especially if they're time constrained. And even if they're not, it is an implied understanding that you don't think I'm time constrained. That's why you're wasting my time with this and this and this and this. It happens more than once. You're going to be categorized mentally as too wordy for the rest of your interaction. Very big problem. Blah, blah, blah. Product, blah, blah, blah. Amazing offer, blah, blah, blah. Basically, this is the best thing out there. You won't be sorry. Other things it says, to be honest with you, if you ever say, to be honest with you, um, you're telling the person that you are not always honest. It's, it's one of these, it, it engenders the opposite of what you're intending by saying the phrase. So you won't be sorry is another one of those. Um, we're super excited. We're especially appreciative. You're an important customer. I feel, I feel, I feel, I don't care how you feel, Skip. Good content in written communications is focused. Prep is the focusing technique. It's point, reason, example, point, prompt. So in this case, we're talking about make the point you're trying to make, motivate it with a reason why that point's important, given an example or illustration. That's why it's not prep. It's prep, example, not illustration. Point and then a prompt. And you need to leave that prompt in even as email so that the conversation continues because this is how you deal with good content in written communications to move the sale forward. For example, another one, meeting recap. Sales a lot here says, I'm following up on your question during our conversation. Yes, we have a guarantee on the widget housing, which is one of your key decision points. Comparable gizmos on the market fail in this area, but our housings are made of titanium. Under stress and pressure, your doodad placed on the widget causes the spreading of forces, which titanium handles perfectly. We also provide a warranty for further reduce your risk of those costly repairs. Does this allow us to move forward? So we guarantee and we warranty, same story. Point there in line two, point in line three, four from the bottom, and then reason, example, point, and prompt. It takes a bit of practice to make this kind of workflow work, but we've noticed now we've got two little frameworks about re written communications at a distance that can save you a lot of frustration and your customers a lot of frustration. The first one is post for the meeting. What's the purpose, the outcome, the structure, and the timing? And prep your points. What's the point now with a reason motivating it? They fail. Example, 
Then the point, uh, point again and a prompt. Point, reason, example, point, prompt. The prompt here in this case, and, and we talk about this a little bit too uh, in the next one, is <laughs> you really need to remember to make an, a written communication a dialogue, and it isn't a dialogue if you just leave it with thanks or sincerely or best regards. Ask a question, get a response. We're kind of normalized to do that. You have what? You had sincerely in there. You, I know. But it's, it's okay done. because it's preceded by does this allow us to move forward? Correct. There's a prompt. Tone, need to be businesslike, neutral. Don't use words like jargon um, or unnecessary words, forced humors, emojis, familiars, filler words, oh. basically. I'm hurting you, aren't I, buddy? You hear me, brah? Yo, bro. So, making a mistake here. Well, I have to say, did you come up with all of these? Yeah. It's because you have to read it afterwards and you got to remember what we were talking about. So that's funny. I'll have to say it's been a very busy time for us since we last had the opportunity to meet. Just to remind you, the point of our meeting was to basically define the outcome of an agreement that we would could really live up to. Huh? And basically, basically, are you talking down to me now to remind you? It has a, it, it falls into an intentional positive, like I'm being a good person and it comes across as negative. So please find the attached document in draft form. It's basically what we briefly discussed. That whole sentence is needless, but it's condescending. Think, I think you'll find it is acceptable. It took us a lot of hard work to get it done, smiley face. Just let me know what you'd like to do from here, sister. Okay, well, nobody does that. I've seen it dozens of times. You know it happens. Well, at least put a comma between here and sister and capitalize the S. Well, did she spell follow-up correctly? I don't know where it is. Meeting follow-up? Oh, okay. You, you know you've got like all of my neurons firing today. We'll go faster if you want it. I can handle it. Credibility? I use that emoji. Here's Megan, her numbers. It's been a very busy time since we met. We took due time to fulfill your commitment to define the outline of an agreement. Please find that in the attached document in draft form. Thank you in advance for your review and comments. I will follow up next week as promised. These are making me scream in my head. Why? You don't like this one? It's, it's so bad. Yes, I get it. The ones that you're saying are bad. I'm with you. They're bad. Okay. I will, however, say, and I'm certain that you probably have some science behind why Joe Hage is wrong, and I hate you for it, but, and it probably doesn't work for everybody. But I've measured you scientifically, Joe. You're fine. We shouldn't talk about that publicly. <laughs> To your point. We shouldn't talk about that publicly either. Okay. You were um, saying. That, you know, everything that I do, everything that I do, I think like bleeds my personality through. And that everything that I want in a business relationship is working together. I'm a service provider. And if my style and humor work for you, we're going to get on great. And if it doesn't, we're not anyhow. So believe me, you know, I know how to write and tightly and bring the point oh, and, I know. and all that stuff, but I imbue my personality in it in a, what you would argue is not always the most business-like way. Tone is neutral first person business-like business-like gives you some latitude I'm not going to give you a brain transplant, but neutral first person gets missed also. I don't know what you were saying. Tone? Yeah. Tell me about the tone here. The, yeah, this is wrong. I'm it's talking confused. About, I'm talking about doing 90% of what you presented mm -hmm. and my deviation is really putting my personality into it and talk and writing as I talk, which is already pretty tight, I think. Yeah. So 
I mean, well, we've been communicating I'm, for nine years now. Do you find that, you know, do I violate this left and right all the time for you because I'm too familiar and fun? No, and I didn't make this for you. I know you didn't. But yeah, it's, so you're asking if I'm understanding correctly, is there room for my personality? And there is no room but for your personality. They're buying you. What I'm trying to have you do is to get the mechanics of communicating in a written format, organized, predictable, and trending toward what would be socially normal. Jonathan Saul asks, I think he's picking up on your sarcasm. He wants to know if chewing gum is appropriate. Yeah, for me. Oh, are you chewing gum right now? Yeah. I didn't That's even what know this. That's what he's laughing at. He's right. So should you not be chewing gum? No, I shouldn't be. Well, what the... Why should we pay $1,600 for somebody who doesn't even pay his advice to his own stuff? I break every one of these rules. What is that telling us? Brian, that means you? that if I was going to compete with you, yeah. I would use the tools and capabilities I need to win. And yeah, I don't always follow everything that I do, but I do follow what is a best practice. My best practice is, is your point, Joe. Is my best practice the same as your best practice? No, but general best practices are this. Okay. My personality is my personality. If you don't like me, you ain't gonna hire I don't me. care. No, I mean... <laughs> It's going to be okay. I think the same thing, but you're even more obnoxious about it. It's, gonna, it's not obnoxious. It's a genuine recognition of the value I place on an opinion that I don't regard. Mm -hmm. It's not mean. Brian not everybody matters. Yeah, huh? just, Brian, say something. No, Brian's, Brian has been forced to, to the cone of silence. I'm going to put him in the attendee thing so he doesn't take up his screen if he's not getting any value. <laughs> push away lose your loose grammar this one is get i i just got a couple of messages here where overuse of commas is the biggest sin for the best overusing commas is bad overusing commas is bad if you can eliminate the comma without blowing the meaning of the sentence eliminate the comma apostrophes misused are here because they designate plural versus con contractions overusing quotation marks so the, the effective dose is 300 milligrams, says Dr. Vessels. Or, quote, the effective dose is 300 milligrams, unquote, says Dr. Vessels, mean completely different things. And we use quotation marks all the time to say calling it a thing when we're saying it's, uh, it raises a question. Mind your quotation marks. Most of the time they show up, they're not necessary. Contractions, do's and don'ts, there, 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 misused words. Your spelling, your spelling guys won't pick up your misused words because words is not words, but it is a ward. And um, here's the, the log line behind all of this. I didn't do it honorably. I didn't because of photosynthesis. If you're utilizing erudite vernacular irrespective of necessity, or better put, using big words needlessly, you're making a mistake. If you've ever used words to sound smart, it causes the opposite. A signal of intelligence, interestingly enough, you know this, Joe, is speaking plainly, logically, and unfortunately, forcefully when necessary, i.e. using profanity. When, when dumb people swear, it's not creative, it's not structured, there's no real purpose or point, it's just another filler word like um. When smart people swear, it's blistering, it hits you emotionally and that's the intention there because a smart person is trying to convey an emotion and therefore, very strong communicators will not swear in public or on that live national TV on purpose unless they need to get their Instagram followers up. But the use of profanity does not correlate with a lack of intelligence. The use of profanity is used frequently by very smart people because they are trying to get a point across. If you're trying to use words to sound smart, which is the real important part, you're doing the opposite. So this has to do with the way you use new words like rubric 
or parsimony, or I, I mean, I can throw those out all the time and I'm losing the team and I know what they mean. Right. But when somebody sits there and says, peruse this uh, article for a few minutes, it's like peruse means to read deeply, not skim it. And so instead of using peruse, say skim it. Just use a simple word. I'm not here to be impressed by your vocabulary. That's often the case when we're talking to somebody with a higher degree or a higher status than us. We try and upgrade our language. It's cultural also. There are some subcultures that believe that they need to use larger words to appear more intelligent. And the, log, the, the, the real point is don't. Be yourself with your words. Back to your bigger point earlier. Where's my personality here? This is where it is, using simple terms. I don't know if Jorg is kidding, but he asked, what about parentheses? Um, parentheses are overused and really indicate that you can't choose your word correctly. But for clarity in some kind of more formal document, like, uh, you know, Liquid Smarts, Liquid Smarts LLC, known as when you're going to substitute something, then later on it's for efficient reading. But in a email, they're not very useful. Okay. York's not being, that's a good question from York. Andre wants to know, what about using a dash to emphasize a point? That's fine. Just don't do three of them. Okay. These folks I didn't know. know that this would be an English lesson today. <laughs> I didn't, but I'm loving it. You're like, this is like candy for me. What? You, you don't like English? No, I love that you're talking about this stuff. You're talking about stuff I profess all the time. Well, this the is way business I community. I mean, guys, for, for better, part of the reason this course even exists is we are poor communicators, but we get away with it because no one sees us doing it. Now we're in a public forum where we are losing a lot of the cues and we're, we're putting on display a lot more communications that are damaging our credibility and folks are starting to notice because they have a little bit more time not commuting and now reading emails going, what did, I don't even know if I can interpret this word salad. One of the things I hate is that block email that comes in because you were talking to your phone and telling it what to say and it doesn't know when there's a pause, a parenthesis, but that, but that, and then the whole thing comes in a block. It tells me when I look at it, you couldn't be bothered to write me an email. So how am I feeling about your message at that point? Joanne writes, as a writer, I can tell you, how you write and compile your words will convey your personality. This will include where you typically place a comma. Mm -hmm. I think she's saying that when you feel the, use, the time to use a comma, use a comma. Because I want to pause your thinking. I want to emphasize the phrase prior to the comma and emphasize the phrase as a next step. It's a logical chain. But I see these things like I, comma, really believe comma that you are you against the oxford comma no but in general if you can avoid the use of commas you should use periods and spaces okay, but if i am writing a list of three will you put a comma before the end yes okay please continue i'm not made of stone calls to action are critical Right, but here's what your call to action should be, and here's some engineering again. A good call to action should be as easy as blowing the seeds off of the dandelion. Just make it that easy. So your point is, what time schedule give me a link? I can have a Calendly link on the bottom of that thing, which most email filters won't kill, but there you go. Um, it should be one thing, not many things. Best to respond to the email, that's the most natural form. Setting up a meeting, naturally through response i'm available here and there if you feel awkward about having them tell you what times they're available because you have too much time suggest some times anyway and have them adjust no i want to see you in this time that's fine make them say it and then um call to action does get you that verification um ability you can get approvals you can get agreements and endorsement so agree endorse but you have to tell them to do that 
because in my world, Brian knows this as well as anyone. If he sends me an email and I agree with it, I don't respond. Got it. You know, you yeah. didn't ask me to respond, so I didn't. Right. right. Yeah. And in fact, well, I'll tell a quick story. This is my first job at a business school. I prepared a an entire uh, um, argument for why I should be given a budget to invest in this new series for a program. And I put a top note on it. And I said, um, here's the basis of interest for this program. Uh, what do you think? And my boss sent it back to me unread. And he said, what do you think is not an appropriate thing to send to me? What, it, what your top note should say is, here's what it is. This is why I justify it. These are the questions you likely would have that I have answered. Okay, to proceed. Mm, That's a yes, no. What a smart lesson. What a smart lesson. It was aggravating, but yes. That's picked up here. Don't end a a message without a call to action. Ask for one to multiple things or give the customer additional work. Because what you did is you said, hey, boss, review this and tell me what you think. Mm Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm sorry. Am I your analyst now? Mm-hmm. I thought that's what I had you for mm-hmm. in my response. Why don't you tell me what we, you think we need to do and why and write that up. Mm-hmm. Or I'm just going to go ahead and stop doing all the stuff that I'm doing and start doing your job and you can leave. You ready? Threatening. Why do you tolerate this? I do it like he only talks to me like four times a year. So I'm like, Okay, that's just Gunter. You're a threatening individual. Am I a blistering, a blistering, gaping asshole to you, Brian? You you should put your microphone on right now. And he doesn't care because he's going to answer this appropriately. Occasionally, but Occasionally. most times, but most times we're direct because I take the time to make the direct communication with you. Hey, direct is all I know. So if you think that's it, and again, it's look, personality well, and you know, teams. I'm a consultant, so it's different, but I'm unhirable. No one's, I, I can't work for anybody ever again. <laughs> Come on, Joe. We got a chair for you. What? We will up your day rate. Come on over. All right. We'll up your day Let's talk rate. about that. Okay. Uh, the signature. This one I love. Be brilliant. No. Full name, title, phone number, website, maybe. Skip your email address. It's already in there. Drop know, the social right? media links. Drop the social media links. They'll find you if they want you. And ditch the motivational sayings and quotes. Be brilliant. I, I can't, I mean, I, I love that so much because I just got a communication that was confusing from someone who gave me too much information about themselves and then wants me to ponder one of the great truths in life. Mm. I don't agree with website because website nine times out of 10 is the domain of your email. I figured that out. So this is maximum. I've seen these things like this long. I know, but I, I'm with you. With the address, the building number, and it's awesome if you're into stalking. It's like, if you're into stalking, it's great. My, uh, this is funny, back, this is like 96. Beth and I were just dating. And uh, she likes to go to the beach. And I was like, there's nothing to do. And she would bring a book. And I've never been good about reading books because I always had work stuff to read. And she pointed out that work stuff counts as reading. I'm like, huh, look at that, it does, all right. So I began to bring like all of my stacked up Wall Street journals with me and like a really heavy bag of paper on the plane. And I'd be like, oh, I'm so motivated to not carry this around. I'd better read this stuff. And when I finished, I used to rip off my address. And she said, what are you afraid someone's going to send you a postcard? Which I thought was hilarious. I, I did that because my father used to do that. When he would throw away his Newsweek, he ripped off his label first so that no one, I'm like, okay. And just, 
I'm my father's son, so I was ripping off my label. And she said, what are you afraid? They're going to send you a postcard. So yeah, um, nobody, nobody's coming to your house. But and I if they, it, as you know, in an email communication with like a real like email system, you must put your address. That's part of the law of sending out broad email campaigns. But that's at the bottom. It is, and it's very small. On my emails to you, I don't keep it short. Well, yeah. One of the so, things that I do uh, from for me is uh, I have different. E I have like a dozen email boxes that I manage. Um, Sometimes I take one when I'm working for a client. And so I would have a Jay Hage at Liquid Smarts if you were a client so that it doesn't look as though who the hell is this, but you know. Um, sometimes what I'll do is I'll, I'll put hyperlinks in my uh, signature box, if you will. So for example, someone who might not know me, I'll say Medical Marcom and I'll put Medical Devices Group and I'll hyperlink them both to those different sites and um, and I use colors as well, so that I have colors that agree with the brand, mm -hmm. things like that. And then I typically do have a line underneath. I'll take like, a, I'll put this much space and then I'll put one line. And right now I'll say something, you know, let me see what the hell I'm saying, but it's about premium typically. And I say, I'm more efficient on MDG premium and my most trusted advisors are there too. And I have MDG premium hyperlinked to that place on the site. Do you ever find that you get caught in spam filters? I don't know. Yeah. We have trouble with no, our automated. No idea, <laughs> because this is my personal, uh, my outlook. So okay. if I get a bounce back, I know. Okay. Yeah. Um, all great stuff. And again, this is a, when you are putting together your standard communication template, Keep it less. Let's not be, because again, people sit there and they, they it's like it's a toy. Then can I do my own written signature? Now I have an image embedded. Just yeah, straighten it out. Embedded. Calm down. Yeah. Um, to the door lid first. We're going to do uh, about uh, five more minutes here, real quick, and then because I saw some questions pop up too. Or I've, hands I've addressed them as they came. Okay. Um, all right. So it, it, I don't know if you have a hard stop. These routinely go up past an hour. No, I do have a bit of a uh, calendar today, unfortunately, guys. Well, then talk. Well, look at that. Well, Let's go. What? But now I'm out, out of my, now I'm out of my uh, zone here. That's why Brian's here. Brian actually um, is. <laughs> See, since it's sitting one day, he's like, well, you know what I mean? I want to know how I'm contributing to the organization and that I'm actually making a difference. And I said, buddy, aside from me, if we knock you out, the whole business falls apart. So relax. We need you. Just forget that when it's time to argue for your salary. Higher presence interactions. This is useful for influencing and persuasion. Lower presence like emails and such are there for coordination and, uh, and access. And that's because higher presence interactions put us sharply in touch with emotions, right? We can see. Now we are built of five senses, but in distance, distance interactions, we really only have access to two of them, but they tend to be two of the most uh, far reaching most. So at distance, they are very acute. So they're sharp is very, very sharp. Just because you might wrap in eight minutes. I'm inviting uh, the folks on the call to leave some comments now, even if not a question, because this is probably not what you expected, but I'm willing to bet that there's a lot of good things in here that you're like, Oh man. Well, we're going to stop with emotions. And then there's like a whole cargo load behind that because I'm just showing you an extract of what we do here. Yeah. So, <laughs> all right. So these senses are much more acute. Um, they're very sensitive and you detect a lot of high context stuff with hearing and sight. And let's talk about the phone for a second, because if you only have your hearing, one of the things that people are in, immediately confronted with is it's, the, it's just, just listening. So I don't even get to see what can I detect as far as emotions go with hearing. And I like to remind you that one of the most foundational human appreciative things, appreciation things is music. And music is able to convey emotions and other things related to pitch, tone, pace, rhythm, and volume. 
And because you appreciate music is it makes you feel a certain way. You can appreciate people's verbal communication the same way. You actually have a library that can help you decode what you're hearing. If you turn that sense organ up, you begin to listen for emotional content. Emotional content is, is especially important when we're trying to influence because decisions are emotionally made. They're primarily emotional. They're secondarily rational. We can give you justification for why you should do this in an email, but getting you to want to do it, we need emotions in play. And it's difficult to get emotional over an email in a way other than would result in a quick rejection. It's just too, it's not, it's not sticky enough. The communication is not involving enough for it to be working in that way. Now, look, your mileage may vary. Terms and conditions apply. Chain letters and, you know, people get wound up over email. People get wound up over a lot of stuff. But as far as building a business, you're going to need to influence one-to-one and listening over the phone is a prime resource there. So one of the things to think about in this space is if you look at pace on the bottom, and of course it's slicing it off, pace would be slow and fast and tone on the left. You can detect fast pace with positive intonations as excitement. Slower is joy. You've got a little slower yet is happiness and contentment. Skepticism stays square there in the neutral. So if you're not hearing a whole lot, that means they're not believing you. Impatience is slightly negative. Disappointment is slightly negative and very slow. Anger tends to be faster and negative. Fear is coming all over the place. Disgust is slow and very negative. Contempt is very slow and negative. And so you kind of have a map here. And then what we do in the, the course is have you listen to a few phrases and begin to decode them for the emotional content. I'll show you the exercise. Uh, here's the exercise actually. We do the exercise this way. We say, no words. What is the pitch, tone, pace, and volume of someone expressing these emotions? And then you split up and you do it. So you can be, begin to build the mental map. What and the discussion words, I don't understand. So don't tell me what they said. Tell me how they said what they said. What was their pace, oh, their see. pitch, their tone, their volume, and so on, when they're expressing happiness, impatience, disappointment, okay. anger, skepticism, and joy. And then we have you report this out right there. Similar setup to the one I've got for Marantz coming up. And then here's the chart. So um, well, that's going to be kind of where I, uh, I let it go because we will, we go then from here into how to influence in the same environment. So now we've gone through a lot of technical stuff. How do you influence in the verbal written environments? Take me and to your last stage. we go, huh? Take me to your sales page. Sales page. I, I want to take this class. Go online. Take me to liquidsmarts.com and where I would buy this. Brian? Well, Brian we actually do a direct We actually do a direct communication in DOJ. We're typically selling into organizations we already have organize, organized with, and we also are selling into organizations where we're tapping new markets. So as far as the page, you'd be able to purchase that. I can get that posted up for, for you, and I'll grab it momentarily. Okay. I'll have it up as early. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I, sell, I sell high percentage deals to large clients from close in. So we, we, right. we're not very good at mass marketing. Well, it was a great deal. Do I like my, my win rate? No, I, I'm, I'm sure it's high, but is that what you meant when you said high percentage? Yeah. Okay. So I'm taking, so I'm not doing a long distance shot at a multi, multitude of targets. I'm walking right up and mm -hmm. then getting as close as I can to, to get it. So um, I have a, one of the, the folks on the call is looking to uh, break into one of the top five um, medical device manufacturers that, you know, God knows how many tens of thousands of employees and the like, and really has no connection there to start with. An idea for where that person would start, that I have my own ideas and I coach them through it, but what's the vessel's approach to it? Okay, so I have micro learnings on this stuff, which is getting started and how to do this. If you want to get into the top five medical device companies, you're going to do the six degrees or Kevin Bacon. Yeah. Um, find someone who you know is best to get introduced. Yeah. That is the best of you ever. And that's your recommendation too, Joe. Um, but where I get, uh, where I get activated in that process is after you've got someone to talk to, how are you going to become sticky? Yeah. 
So we really need to figure out with a bit of research and consideration how to build an, build a ladder of escalating commitment to talk to you and, uh, and then actually improve your win rate for, from every step in. So I would start with a big issue that they're having to deal with so you can get brought into the highest level possible. Um, you know, if you're, if you're going to establish yourself as a, uh, a prime solution provider, uh, don't go through the normal vendor registration process. Right. Do it, do it in a focused manner. Um, here it is, by the way. Oh, okay. You just say it straight that link. It's liquid smarts distance sales. Yeah. Being there virtually cool picture. So I'll share my screen so people can see that or you're, oh, are you sharing it? Let's yeah. See. Okay, good. Yeah. Um, Sukar, you had your hand raised. I gave you access to the mic if you wanted to ask something. Um, no, well, really just um, how does this pertain to like pitch deck competitions and getting your, you know, I, I, I appreciate everything that, that you've said. And, and um, so I was just wondering about pitch decks. Um, that is the, so we go through written, verbal, and virtual in the course. So I showed you written and some of verbal. The virtual one shows how do you lay out the deck, so the technical aspects, and then the procedural influencing aspects that go on top of that. So how do you craft a story that sticks? How do you tie it to the corporate mission of the organization? How do you make the point that they're going to remember? And then how do you convey that and repeat that over the the digestion of the presentation. So pitch decks very much. So and we've got rules of thumb, how short they should be, how visual they should be and, and what the branding you're going to do around the initiative. Uh, it's one of the things we did to get Boston scientific was we created a branding, uh, a branding around what we were going to do. And there's a course that we've actually just developed as well. There too. Uh, well, we have, we have distance strategy. Um, so how to be strategic for yourself, but it's done in a distance environment and distance negotiations coming out uh, in a week or so. Um, I'm going to, uh, but Sue, if you need some help, give me a call. We'll help you. Okay. I, I, uh, I just connected with you on LinkedIn. So cool. So here's the page you took us to. I clicked yep. on program download and I got this very mm -hmm. handsome picture of you, by the way. Ah, uh, it's, it, it, you can tell it's me. Yes. Um, I'm, I'm surprised and frankly disappointed by this. First, this is nuts. What? Come on, man. But anyhow, this is your last page. There's no call to action. Well, it's an overview of what it is supposed to be. Okay. Well, what you think it, it says is. Overview. Why the person who visited your site and downloaded. Think well, it is. And you're talking to the right guy about this and Brian's listening, isn't he? And if you go back to the page, Joe, you'll see at the bottom of the page, there's actually a form to fill out so we can be able to contact you directly. And no, 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 I, I get that, but you, here you stopped me. You invited me to do this. You took mm -hmm. me elsewhere. And you took me here, and I'm like, what? This, this didn't make me feel like, oh, my God, I need this. And, and certainly this slide, I'm sorry, feels sloppy to me. No, yeah, you know, I, I like the points, and it, every one of us has an opportunity to improve. This yeah, is worked. This is it's it's sad to say that's worked. So imagine what we would do if we actually got that right, Brian. Come on, bud. I Don't let guys, me put that shit out there. This is you our guys brain. Are doing fine without me. Just is that right? <laughs> it seems that way. You guys seem to be doing okay. Oh well, I am two minutes late for my next call. Um, Brian, friend me you want to on stay out a bit, or do you have to jump? Yeah, let you stick around, Brian. Um, friend us on LinkedIn, follow us on LinkedIn. Uh, we're all about this science backed by experience, behavioral science stuff. Um, we are part of the community, so we are prone to help. Um, you got to know my personality, but in, in, uh, I'm in this because I like to work on interesting problems with people that we like. And so Joe and I've remained close over what is approximately going on. It's nine. I was thinking about it today. It'll be 10 next year. A long time. Mm -hmm. I thought it was we're oh, over. I I we're over a decade now. But no, I met you in 2011. 
Ah, I'm good sorry. year. Good year. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, reach out. Let's, uh, let's stay connected. Viva Joe Hage. Viva Med Device Group. Dr. Vessels, ladies and gentlemen. See you later. All right, bye.